Welcome to the studio workshop of Landell Flutes. I'm John Landell, master flute maker, and I have been collaborating with two scientists from Queen's University at Kingston in Ontario, Canada. My history is I started out as a flute and a band and uh, first studied at the Lincoln Conservatory in the preparatory department in high school. So I had a, a graduate student as a teacher there and eventually I applied and I was accepted to perform, perform and be a performance major um, at New England Conservatory. And so after four years, I had a bachelor's degree in, in performance and I was headed for an orchestra position. Played with the Boston Symphony on stage, actually. Um, that was like the, the peak of my playing career. Um, so when anyway, I came back to my job, which I had started at Powell as an apprentice, um, and I really enjoyed that work a lot. And, and after three or four years there, I started my own shop. It took about a year to build the first flute. And uh, since then, I've made uh, 184 flutes, mostly silver, some gold, and the one that I play, which is titanium. Initially, I wanted to uh, be able to verify what I could feel as a difference with the titanium head joints in a, in a flute. So um, I uh, approached the physics professor at the University of Vermont and I told him about my project and I, I wanted to be able to uh, measure the overtones from the sound of silver versus titanium. And I also wanted to measure the rate at which the flute came up to pitch and to sound. Uh, because I felt initially this is a quicker head, it just speaks so quickly. So that's why I made this device to blow the flute. Um, mechanically. With this optical setup, we recorded both the air jet coming from the real player, Bill Egmatov in this case, and with the mechanical blowing tube apparatus that I made to open and close the airstream very close to the air jet, which gives us stability and control of the air pressure and the angles for positioning the air jet. These high-speed videos clearly show the snake-like meandering of the air jet going in and over the armature hole. So how was this air jet made visible for the camera to capture it? Well, it wasn't easy. Illuminating the air itself won't give you any picture. You need to seed the air with ultrafine particles of some kind so that they are small enough to, to follow without disturbing the flow and yet large enough to scatter light and give you the image of the jet. You may have seen the smoke tracers in wind tunnels revealing airflow around the car or the airfoil model, for example. It's the same principle of flow visualization, but we don't want the flute player to inhale smoke just so we can see the air jet coming from the player's lips. So we developed a tiny curved tube that enters the player's mouth at the lip edge and delivers a fine fog of micron-sized glycerin drops, but only when the player blows the air out. Then the laser light sheet illuminates the player's face, lips, and the armature hole right at the middle. And we ran the tests and uh, I got a, a printed um, report that he had published in an acoustic journal, um, which showed that the titanium speaks about twice as fast as the silver flute. It comes up to resonance so fast. And the other thing that we notice is the third harmonic is stronger. About uh, twice as strong as on a silver flute. Now the overtones are what really give the color, or what I, what I call timbre, to the sound of the flute. And by doing that, um, you know, various instruments have the same, same qualities, but they're slightly different, and what makes this one better than that? Um, it's usually the overtones. The goal of this work was to produce video photos that show the way the flute produces sound as an interaction between the jet of air from the player's lips and the vibrating column of air inside the body of the flute. The flute doesn't use a reed such as we see on other wind instruments, but the flute has a hole for the player to blow over that causes the air pulsations without any reeds. We call that hole an embouchure hole. So I spoke with Bill Egnatoff about how the flute makes the vibrating air column. We know that the air stream from the player's lips travels across the armature hole, opening and strikes against the far edge of the hole. Rather than being split into two steady half streams, 
The air jet is affected by a pulsating pressure wave inside the flute. It swings inside and outside of the hole with the frequency of the standing wave of air inside the flute body at the resonant frequency determined by the length of the air column in the flute body. This is similar to making the tone on the string instrument. There, the bow pulls the string with random, uh, you may say chaotic force, yet the string vibrates at the resonant frequency determined by its length and stiffness. Similarly, for example, you may have noticed that when you're driving in your car at high speed with all the windows closed and someone opens a window in the back seat, suddenly there's a deep pulsating sound in the car, right? That's an example of where the car becomes a resonator and the air inside the cabin creates a standing wave with a distinct and very annoying low frequency. The air at the window opening pulsates, getting in and out of the cabin at the resonant frequency determined by the cabin volume and shape. Having more windows open makes the air pass through and the cabin is no longer what we call a resonant cavity. What can we learn with this kind of visualization? Besides the bass frequency and jet swinging motion, it is the details of the jet movement that will give us the timbre or the color of the flute tone that is a fine point of interaction between the head joint and the player's lips. We aim to learn by visual analysis of these videos about the influence of the intricacy of the geometry of the armature hole, how the undercut with certain radiuses and, and angles affects the tone. We hope to find out more about the differences between really good head joints and those that don't perform so well. Such work can take a very long time to make any progress. I'd really like to thank Bill Egnaton for his persistence and uh, he's, he's been here to my shop for several classes and I, um, I very much respect his uh, intuition about how the flute plays and what he's done um, in Canada especially. And also for Darko Matovich, he's a specialized engineer in fluid dynamics.